good morning, Miles here. Um, I thought I would do a quick video uh, review, if you like, on a generator that I happen to have. And it's uh, this one here. It's a very small diesel generator. It's powered by a Yanmar engine and it's rated to one and a half kilowatts at 230 volts. Um, pure sine wave output, apparently. It's probably the smallest diesel engine generator I've ever seen and um, given that it's probably of interest to other people uh, I thought I would do a little video on it and show you about it and what I think of it. If we look at the engine side first you'll see there's the uh, the, the Yanmar branding. It's a pull start which is not uh, surprising for a small generator. We've got air filter assembly there on this side. Come round to this face, you've got the diesel fuel tank on the top. That's probably, I don't know, two litres, probably three litres capacity. On the side of the Enmore engine here, you've got the, uh, the run stop levers, engine oil, uh, there's the fuel pump, that's the decompression lever, one of them. Oh there, yeah, the fuel cutoff switch there. We'll go around to this face where we see more of the electronic side. You've got the alternator there, which is absolutely tiny. The whole thing's about four inches thick. Uh, there's your switch gear. You've got this um, basic plasticky uh, voltmeter, circuit breaker. Uh, there's the earth pin. This is the primary output. On this particular one, uh, for some reason, it's got a European plug on it, 16 amp plug. And come around to the remaining side, control box here that's presumably the, the inverter circuit and it says pure sine wave on it. Well, and there's the exhaust there. On the top, there's a bit of information about it. Don't know if you can read any of that. It says diesel power generator, model serial, continuous output 1.5 kilowatts, 230 volt, factor one. The engine spins at 3000 revs, says you shouldn't use it in higher than 45 degrees C and you shouldn't use it above 1000 meters altitude which I find a bit bizarre because uh, significant portions of the planet is more than that but never mind. This particular one was made in uh, 2010, May the 18th, should make it about 9 years old, uh, 50 hertz, 6.5 amps, single phase, yep. It says it weighs 49 kilograms, dry, I believe that. Uh, machine dimensions 515mm by 420mm by 510mm and there's, there is some maker information factory Shenzhen Autoshan special machine and electrical company limited it is a Chinese generator however the engine is Japanese Yanmar is a Japanese engine company and Yanmar have been around since 1912 they are very much like the Japanese equivalent of our Lister or, or Petter, something like that. They make small to medium sized diesel engines for industrial use, uh, marine engines, agriculture, things like that. They're quite well regarded, Yanmar diesels. Uh, I've owned two in the past, including this one, and it's not really enough of a sample to come with, with a conclusive uh, opinion on them, but both of them, including this one, I'm afraid, have been absolute pigs to start two engines isn't really enough of a sample. The prevailing opinion is they're actually quite good engines so you know I would go with that one. It's got these handles on it so you can uh, really I suppose you're supposed to have one person each side. They're quite clever actually you can pull the handle and uh, pull the end then it locks so you can change position depending on how you want to carry it or you can fold them away like that so you're not bashing your shins on them when it's operating. It's also got this plate on the top. I've taken that off. Well, I put it on for just to show you what it's like, but I don't particularly like it very much because it hinders access to the real decompression lever, which is here. It's kind of got a remote cable to the this sort of remote one here, so moving that moves the real one. But I'd actually rather use the real one. It's much easier. And also you've got a, a prime here, a priming um, inlet to help it start in cold conditions. But you can't get to that with a panel on it. 
with the panel off you can also see I don't know if you can see it on the, the video you probably can't to be honest but there's some spec on the alternator and usually it produces 300 volts AC at 200 Hertz so that's very fast it's a very small alternator as you can see I mean that that is the entire thickness of it and that 300 volts comes out of these little wires here into the uh, control box I guess what it will do inside this box is it'll go through a bridge rectifier and convert it into DC then it'll change the voltage down it'll synthesize the, the alternating current to 30 volt just like an inverter does when you would buy one for your car or whatever that um, converts 12 volt DC to 230 volt AC uh, or 120 volt if you're in the states or a 120 volt country so uh, this is it it's just about carryable by one person well i'd say just i don't want to carry it very far but with two people it's actually a doddle it's quite frugal so far it's limited amount i've used it it's only 350 odd cc engine so as i hinted at earlier i'm not going to lie to you my primary problem with this generator is it's an absolute pig to start i bought it online from a gardener uh, who hadn't used it much actually I'm not surprised he was selling it <laughs> he was using it for um, running a hedge trimmer he had quite a big garden and he used to carry it around in, on a wheelbarrow he was an, not elderly but he wasn't a young man and he just had a quite a big operation on his heart which limited uh, his strength somewhat so I'm not surprised that he decided this wasn't a generator for him anymore so he put it on eBay and I'm always a uh, a sucker for a generator going on eBay if it's local. It's a pull start, as I said before. I don't think that's the right starter for this engine. I think it should be a handle start because this does not feel strong enough at all. In fact, the first time I tried to start it, it was so difficult that after about 10 pulls, the what was quite a thick cord on it just broke in half, it just wouldn't go. So I've actually replaced the cord now with some actually quite high spec sort of power cord kind of stuff so it's quite strong although it's much thinner so I'll give you a quick example of, uh, of how to start it so you can see what's involved in case you're interested in in buying one of these things yourself I appreciate it's a bit difficult to see on the uh, on the video but you've got this decompression lever here and that's quite important because diesel needs an awful lot of compression to get an ignition uh, in the cylinder to get it to fire a lot more than a petrol generator so a petrol engine so when you pull this if you don't move the decompression lever you're going to hit a brick wall very quickly where frankly yeah there it is that's the that's the full compression there you need a tractor to pull that like that and it's just impossible so what you do is you move the compression lever down decompression I should say and what that does is it opens one of the valves slightly so that the fuel doesn't compress fully and it makes it much easier to turn it but it won't start like that so when you push it down it'll stay down but then it'll pop up as it moves so the best procedure is hold it down just for a few turns just get some fuel pumped through it so when you're doing this it is still pumping fuel up into the um, injector and you put your, your foot on it somewhere on the frame or I even use this then you pull it and when it's about halfway that decompression lever will move back down and you'll suddenly hit an absolute wall on the cable and you'll either go flying because it's snapped and crash into a wall or something or the generator will come flying after you or if you're lucky it'll start the idea is that when that moves down the engines already turning quite quickly so it gives you a little bit of extra momentum so you've got to pull start it but basically the inertia in the spinning engine uh, gives you that extra little bit of help
actually that was quite straightforward to start um, but it's probably because I had it running earlier it took me quite a few attempts to get it to go so it was already a bit warm it's actually a lot easier now to put the thinner starter cord on you know you can start it but just be prepared for the fact that the cord's probably going to break uh, at some point Yanmo do actually do this engine in an electric start version so you know that would be a little bit heavier because obviously you've got the starter motor and you'd have to have a battery on it as well but it'd be worth the extra weight I think um, so what I'm going to do now is start it again and I will uh, just show you on a, a voltmeter and a, a power meter uh, what it's like under load I'm going to put it under a 1 kilowatt load um, remember it's rated to 1.5 kilowatts so it's uh, well within its abilities I'm not going to overload it by putting a big load on it uh, actually very silly I think see this is the uh, the circuit breaker here it's a 16 amp circuit breaker you know that's like a bit silly because that's you know in the money of three and a half four kilowatts you know I'd have put that in maybe a six six amp breaker or something like that so it's not really providing much protection for the machine so this will trip at 16 16 amps you know but you've uh, you've blown the generator up long before you get to 16 amps I think probably give you a bit of protection against the short circuit but that's about it it's on a C curve as well I'm not going to be able to talk easily when the generator is running so just to show you what I've got is the European uh, plug to UK adapter and in that plug this uh, actually quite handy meter just shows you what's, uh, what voltage cycles uh, amps and what's uh, going through it and then a the load here on this this heater basic heater got fan only that draws about 30 watts you got one kilowatt, two kilowatts. I'm not going to put it on two kilowatts because it's um, would overload the generator and I want to break it. So I'm just going to put it on one. Give me a minute to start this up. On switch. So as you'd expect for synthesized output, uh, it's rock steady 50 cycles a second, which is what you'd want. Uh, the voltage was around 230-ish. Um, the voltage did drop on the load a little bit, uh, but not by much. And the load on it was just over uh, just over a kilowatt, was 1,030 watts. Uh, the 1,000 watt being the heater element and the 30 watts being the fan coat with that fine it just sounded a bit busier the engine was working harder there's a bit more smoke coming out of the exhaust but it was handling that no problem all in all impressions it's okay in fact I'd be very pleased with it if it was easier to start it's okay just be prepared to um, maintain the uh, the starter mechanism I think because it's quite flimsy I'm quite surprised I thought it'd be a little bit more robust than it is on the on the plus side it's the engine's good it seems well made you know it seems of, of good quality it's uh, quite light 
well, it's about the only diesel engine generator that I've ever been able to carry on my own. It's also very frugal. It's a lot cheaper to run than a, a petrol one of equivalent size. It's not particularly quiet, so if you want to use it on a campsite or something, I think you'd still be unpopular. If you're after a generator that's about as easy as you're going to get to carry over difficult terrain, and it's got to be diesel, um, and you don't need too much output, then this is you know, possibly the one for you if you can uh, find one for sale.